What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Today's Tuesday, April 14th, starting with the Trade Hacker question of the day. How is the value of an option calculated? Now, we don't really get into this that much in the courses just because the platforms do all this calculation for us. However, once you want to start diving deep into the numbers, into the data of the actual values of an option, this is important to understand. But the reason we don't too much in our courses, A, we're just we're teaching you how to trade and the platforms do all the calculation for you. So it's kind of like, why do you buy a watch? You know, is it so you can take it apart and figure out all the intricacies and how it works? Or do you buy a watch to tell you what time it is? We, that's the approach that we take. You know, the platforms do all the work. Uh, they're highly accurate and reliable. And so they just kind of tell us what time it is. But if you want to take a quick deep dive into how the value of an option is calculated, the easy thing to do is if you go to the trade tab in Thinkorswim, and we're looking at SPY as an example, these columns you can change. And so I've just changed these to intrinsic and extrinsic. And to do that, you just click on it, go to Option Theoreticals and Greeks, and that's where you see Intrinsic and Extrinsic. And so what we'll look at today is just as an example, look at the calls. And what you'll notice is that all the in-the-money options have what is called Intrinsic Value. And then all the options have what's called Extrinsic Value. So the Intrinsic Value and the Extrinsic Value, those together is what gives us the value of each specific option. So for example, if we look at this option here, the 269 strike, what you're gonna see is it's got an intrinsic value of 14 and a half, plus the extrinsic value of 10 and a half, gives you a little over 25. Now the market's open, so it's moving around a little bit, but those added together is what gives you the actual value of the options. So the question is, well, what is in intrinsic and what is extrinsic? Well, if you take, the price of the underlying stock. So in this case, SPY, it's trading at about 283.65. And you see the strike that we're looking at is 269. So if you take 283.69 minus 269, that's where you're gonna get the intrinsic value. So essentially that's the value that if you were to exercise that option today, that is what it's worth. And then, so what is extrinsic value? Well, that is everything else. That is the time value. You know, obviously as options get closer and closer to expiration, the extrinsic value goes away. That time decay goes away. It's also the built-in uh, projected volatility and, and presumed interest rate values, et cetera. So it's, it's all those things. And so it's the intrinsic value plus the extrinsic value is what gives you the value of the underlying option that you're trading. So take it one step further. If I right click and I buy a call and let's just take this over to the analyze screen since we are, a lot of us are visual learners and let me just, just show the hypothetical here. So this is a risk profile graph of a long call. And so what you'll see is, and if you keep your eyes on this box right here, as I hover my mouse, what you'll see is that obviously if the current price we're at a zero p l right no profit or no loss we haven't put this trade on so right when we put it on we'll be at approximately zero percent p l if i hover over that current price look at the teal box at expiration it's about minus 1038 dollars so that is the extrinsic value the difference between where it's currently trading and where it will be at expiration that's that time decay component that's the projected volatility and all that stuff built in to the price of an option. So hopefully that helps if you were ever wondering how the value of an option is calculated. All right, let's check out what's going on in the markets today. Stocks up big, S&P's up 75, Dow up 480, NASDAQ up 350, Russell up 20. Still got about an hour and a half left to go in the market, but really strong, strong market here, even in the face of, you know, what I talked about yesterday, the unemployment numbers and everything else going on with the coronavirus. Now we are starting to see that 
leveling off of the number of cases and the number of deaths, which is, you know, presumably what the market is liking about this situation. But like I've been saying on this entire rally up, I just, I don't think we're out of the woods yet. I still think we're going to see some more downside. So one of the things we did today is just layered in a little bit more short delta. And keep in mind, as I've been talking over these last couple of weeks, as we've been seeing this rally and we've been layering the short delta, keep in mind, we are not overly short. As our, as our members know, we like to keep a range of short delta anywhere from one to one to up to five to one versus our theta. So our short delta, if we beta weight that to SPY, we, we like to get no more than five to one. Well, right now we're really at about one to one on that range. So we could certainly use even more short delta. So I don't want you to think that we're just absolutely loading the boat and betting our mortgages that this thing's going to go down. But we certainly are continuing to position additional short pieces as this thing goes up because I just don't think we are out of the woods yet. So that stocks oil making big move almost down 10% today. So even after the halt on production, you know, reducing the supply, which you would think would push oil up, oil is continuing its slide lower. So interesting stuff there. Bonds down a little bit, natty gas down about four and a half percent. If you look at some of the stocks of what's going on in some of the main stocks that we look at, I mean, Apple's up over 5%. Look at Amazon up over 5%. I mean, this thing is is continuing to now hit new highs. If we look at it on a year to date, Amazon's up 20% year to date. And, and so obviously they're benefiting from a lot of people staying at home and ordering as opposed to going out. Some of the others, well, I mean, if you look at Tesla making a big move, apparently up over 11%, apparently Tesla is okay with this. I mean, people all still all have the, uh, the amount of discretionary income needed to drop 100K on a car. One of our members, Jeannie, in our community said, yeah, maybe they're just buying their Teslas and they're sitting in Wynn parking lot ready to go gamble again. You know, Wynn Casino's up four and a half percent today. So interesting moves in the face of adversity throughout the market. Keep in mind, earnings are starting to come out. So we had a couple of banks announced today. JP Morgan, so the big banks, JP Morgan is down after their announcement. Wells Fargo announced this morning and uh, they're down as well. Goldman Sachs and Bank of America announced tomorrow morning before the bell. And so you're seeing the banks, you know, kind of feeling some pressure right now. If we look at one thing I wanted to point out here is if we go back to JP Morgan, because they already announced earnings, typically in the past in a quote unquote normal market, what you'll see is after they announce earnings, you're going to get that implied volatility crush, right? And now it's here, we get a little bit of a crush. That's not a very good example. Right here, you know, implied volatility goes up, 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 leading up to earnings, and then the implied volatility gets crushed once they announce earnings. And so what we're seeing here is, you know, implied volatility went down a little bit for JP Morgan. You see the IV rank dropped a little bit, the IV percentile dropped a little bit, but in no way would I call that an implied volatility crush like we are used to seeing after an earnings announcement. So as I talked about last week in a video, our normal kind of earnings related strategies, we're, we're taking a little step back and a little pause on those at this point because we're not getting that, you know, I didn't think we would get that implied volatility crush. You can see that there's still a lot of fear in this uncertainty in this marketplace. I mean, the IV percentile is staying above to 89. IV ranks at 36, so it has come down it, the Ivy rank has come down some. So the options are definitely contracting from where they were just a couple weeks ago in the face of this rally, but still we're not seeing that crush like you'd see after the uncertainties out of the market, which tells us there's still a lot of uncertainty. So if you're going to trade earnings, I would say be directional. You know, if you want to take a shot that it's going to go up or down and stay super, super small, you know, that's some of the things that we might be potentially doing. But are typically premium selling strategies, even iron ducks. It's not something that I'm interested in testing just yet, just because of the really uncertain nature of, of everything going on. So hope that helps. Everybody have a good evening. We'll talk to you tomorrow.